Hello everyone, my name is uh, Ori, I'm a VP R&D at Achilles, and today we're going to talk about uh, Kubernetes secret and in general how to make your production environment uh, safer. Um, a few words about Achilles. Achilles uh, is a secret management uh, company. Uh, we provide uh, a platform uh, as a service to manage your secrets, your keys, uh, and even provide zero trust remote access. Our platform is based on a unique technology uh, that is patented uh, called Achilles TFC. The concept behind it is to make uh, the encryption keys um, um, used as fragments in ge different geographic locations. And this technology is already FIPS 140-2 certified. Um, before we begin, uh, I just want to make sure that everybody is in the same page in terms of what secrets are and why are they so important. Um, so secrets are small uh, digital pieces uh, that typically used for authentication. It's, this can be either tokens or API keys, uh, username and password, anything that gets you authenticated to different resources. And today, most of the applications and services, if not all of them, uh, are required to have some access to external resource. Uh, this means that they need to have access to those secrets. And historically, they were part of the code itself or um, as a configuration file that stores this secret. But this is considered insecure because um, you need to protect those credentials. Uh, otherwise, uh, people who have access to those applications or the host that runs those applications and services will have access to those secrets and can authenticate itself um, somewhere else uh, without anyone knowing. The second concern is more about how to manage those and to govern them uh, and, and even have trace, uh, traceability to see who access which resource, uh, when uh, and why. And this is very important for security folks uh, that uh, need to have uh, visibility to what, uh, what's going on, what are the potential risks and how to mitigate them. Uh, specifically, if, if there is some uh, security violation, uh, you would you want to be able to revoke access uh, to just to the uh, specific uh, individual um, or specific application that violated the policy. This brings us to the first problem uh, of Kubernetes secrets. So as you probably know, Kubernetes is one of the most popular container orchestration tool. Uh, it is used is widely used in production environment and other uh, uh, environments. Uh, by different companies, uh, very popular technology. Uh, as many of the DevOps tool chain today, it also contains internal secret store, which means that it allows uh, applications or uh, application pods uh, running on a Kubernetes cluster to have access to secrets. However, uh, not many uh, people know that the uh, built-in Kubernetes secret store is not super secure by itself because it's only encoding the secrets in base64 and store them in the ETCD uh, database uh, key value store um, uh, in the control plane, which means that it's slightly better than uh, putting the secrets in configuration and code, but not much better because if somebody has access to the application pod itself, uh, the control plane, it will immediately have access uh, to the secrets um, and they're not as protected as you would like them to be. Uh, so what can you do about that? First of all, any secret of any kind should be encrypted, uh, not encoded because encoding doesn't require any key uh, to perform the reverse operation of decoding, uh, but using some uh, a strong encryption algorithm, uh, this would make the life of uh, a potential hacker that has access to the encrypted blob much, much harder to decrypt the data uh, without having access to the encryption key. The next question to come, uh, that comes to mind is where do I store the encryption key itself? Uh, as you know, application doesn't have sophisticated ways um, uh, to authenticate to uh, key storage, um, like uh, multi-factor authentication. So the key should, should also be accessible uh, to the application itself if the application needs to decrypt the data. And this brings us to uh, the problem known as secret zero problem. You need access to a secret, which is the encryption key, uh, to decrypt data which contains their secrets. 
this is solved uh, today uh, when running on cloud infrastructure by using the native cloud IAM. Uh, but for on-premise environment, this is not an easy task uh, uh, to solve. Uh, in our solution, we will demonstrate that later on, um, we have a patented uh, authentication method called Achilles Universal Identity, which addresses this specific problem. Um, as you know, cluster can contain multiple application or application rich, uh, which means that there are multiple pods running in the same or maybe different namespaces. Uh, with different purposes. There is no reason why one application will be able to see secrets of another. Um, so this brings us to the next problem, which is how do you segregate um, access to secrets between different namespaces and pods? Uh, in, in the regular mechanism, this is not uh, super simple to do, uh, but any modern uh, secret management platform uh, provides you the ability to distinct different application and preserving the least privileged access um, approach. Um, and this can be done in, in, by a specific namespace or by a specific pod. Um, and this uh, minimizes the blast radius in case one of the application has been breached. That's nice, but uh, we can also talk about how uh, we maintain secure access to the cluster itself. Um, so um, when talking about cluster access management, we typically refer to uh, humans, uh, administrators that use uh, any kind of uh, access to the uh, API server uh, using kubectl command or uh, other uh, tools to access the server. And typically um, this is used by uh, certificates to authenticate to the uh, Kubernetes control plane. The main problem is that the certificates are normally lo long lived. Uh, you don't have good visibility on who has access to the control plane and let alone talk about uh, revocation of access because once the certificate um, is being issued and it is long lived, it's super uh, hard task uh, to revoke access to the control plane. The solution uh, in this case is to use short lived PKI certificates or temporary access token depending on uh, the cluster that you're running. Um, and the uh, Achilles uh, platform also knows how to issue those certificates, basically acting as a private CA, signing the, the certificate and the Kubernetes con control plane trusted. Uh, as a bonus, you get full visibility to who accessed the cluster and when, because anytime that you need access, you will need to uh, generate yourself a new certificate. Uh, same goes for managing it and uh, revoking in case uh, something happened, it's as simple as uh, disallowing uh, the Achilles platform to continue to sign certificates. So since it's short lived, it will expire very soon um, and then the access will be revoked. Um, talking about the solution. So um, the general solution is to use a kind of secret management platform. Uh, this secret management platform protects your secrets uh, because they are being encrypted and addressed and only being used at the application level. Uh, you also have a controlled access to the Kubernetes cluster. To do that, you would need to make sure that you have a trusted machine identity, meaning that you were able to authenticate to the secret management platform using either Cloud IAM or Achilles Universal Identity to solve the secret zero problem. And the solutions that are in the market today are either self-deployed solutions, uh, which means that you need to make sure that you have all the infrastructure set up, uh, you have dedicated uh, IT and DevOps team to maintain and, and make sure that the system is highly available, or you can use uh, a SaaS platform that takes care of that for you, meaning that we take care uh, as a SaaS provider uh, that the system is highly available and you have uh, replication to, to different regions and you have the minimal uh, latency for that and so on and so forth. Now it's time for a short demo. Um, I would like to get um, access to my Kubernetes cluster and see what pods are running on the default namespace. So typically this would be the command that I'm running. Uh, behind the scene, what's happening is that you're using a client certificate, which is long lived to authenticate to the Kubernetes control plane and get the output back. In our case, what, I, what we did to, uh, to make it more secure 
is that we hook the command and we basically run a command line uh, process that authenticate using a more modern authentication method. In my case, it will be based on XAML. Um, and then you can use uh, multi-factor authentication uh, to get uh, yourself authenticated. With that, you will get access to the Achilles platform to uh, sign yourself a short-lived certificate that will be valid for a few minutes um, as you can configure it. So let, let's start uh, with that. As you can see, I'm automatically being redirected uh, to my identity provider. In this case, it's Okta. Here, uh, as part of the signing process, you can uh, configure to use multi-factor authentication. In my case, it's just a demo, so I will be using username and password. And I get a confirmation that the authentication uh, was successful and I can resume and see the output uh, of my command here. The second time I run the command, for example, uh, this case, um, I'm already signed on, so I will only see the output uh, of the nodes that I'm using. In, in my case, it's a, it's a minikube. Um, more commands that you can do is, for example, um, uh, let me see, see the logs of a specific uh, output here, anything of that kind. Uh, in addition, I have prepared uh, a demo file called uh, test.yaml. If we look at this file, it's basically a simple deployment that is using uh, an Alpine container. And here we can demonstrate two ways or two methods of injecting secrets uh, from the Achilles platform uh, to this uh, specific uh, pod, okay? One way of uh, injecting is using a mounted file system. Like you see in this case, we have a notation that says that the Achilles plugin is enabled. We have another annotation that says that I want to inject a file um, uh, based on a secret, which is, this is uh, the secret path to it. And we'll show it just in just a moment. And the second way of injecting is using environment variable, as you can see here, so I have defined an environment variable called my secret. And the value is another annotation with the Achilles colon prefix to another secret. In this case, this is the path of the secret. What will happen when this pod will be launched is that we will run a, a command line, basically running an echo to the first secret and then echoing the environment variable so you should be able to see the secret values, even though there are no secrets in the deployment file itself. Uh, before we get this uh, deployed, uh, let's switch very quickly to see uh, my account. So I'll log into my demo account um, and maybe showing here. Showing here the two secrets that I pre-created. Okay, so we have a folder called uh, Kubernetes here. And those are the two secrets that we're about to fetch. As you can see, they are at, encrypted at, at any point in time and we'll decrypt them using the application. Okay, so now it's time to uh, use the kubectl command again to apply uh, the test.yaml file. And it's created. So if I run again, get pods, I should be able to see the application that is running. Now running on the logs, here we can see that the first secret is this secret value is injected to file and the second one is true environment variable. The interesting part would be if I switch back to my account I can check the audit logs and see that there were two requests uh, made. And let's uh, filter by get secret value. Uh, and, and those were done by my Kubernetes cluster that is running on AWS. The first request was to get the secret value and it was successful. And the second one for the second secret, it was also successful. Um, again, if I go back to the secrets, uh, I can also see um, that I can decrypt them using uh, the web UI and to see the same value there. And uh, same goes for the secret secret, second secret. 
you can also see uh, that the PKI issuing uh, was done through XAML and this is associated with my username, right? So any user that logs into the cluster, you will, you'll be able to see that in the audit log. By the way, these audit logs can be forwarded to your existing log system uh, or SIM systems um, to your convenience. Just to summarize what we've seen uh, so far in the demo is we've seen the ability to use uh, secured secrets from a secret management platform in a standard Kubernetes deployment. We have seen a way to authenticate uh, to the cluster using modern authentication methods uh, with short-lived certificates to make your access more secure. Um, and that's it. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them.